Hey, peace sauce. Follow here. In 1995, Pixar released the world's first 3D animated movie, Toy Story. But if you remove the lights and textures, you're only left with the 3D models. But what is a 3D model? The word 3D is thrown around left and right nowadays. We have 3D films, 3D printing, 3D audio, but do we even know what 3D means? To understand how a 3D model works inside a computer, we have to understand how 3D works in the real world. 3D stands for three dimensions. So let's analyze all three of them. Imagine a line and let's call it X. This will be our first dimension. Now you can move a point left and right and it's not very interesting. So let's add our second dimension and let's call it Y. Now we can go up and down, left and right. It's sort of like those old Mario games. But what if we wanted some thickness? I, I mean thickness. Well, for that we're gonna need the third dimension. Let's call it Z axis. Now we can plot our points not only up and down, left and right, but also forwards and backwards. And just like that, we can have a 3D object. And that's exactly how it works inside a computer. When was the first time that a 3D object was created inside a computer? For that, we're gonna need a hand. No, no, not, not this hand, Edwin Cadmull's hand. This name might be familiar for some. Edwin Cadmull, or Cadmull, the first person to create a 3D model. In 1972, at the University of Utah, Cadmull created a three-dimensional model inside a computer. And as you can see in his video, he also animated it. And it's incredible! And for Cadmull and the world, this was the beginning of a new era. Only two years later, in 1974, Fred Park created and animated a 3D model of his wife's face. And not only did he model his wife, he animated her reciting Emily Dickinson's How Happy Is The Little Stone poem. How happy is the little stone that rambles in the road alone and never cares about careers and exigencies never fears. Whose coat of elemental brown of passing... I know, it's mind-blowing that they created something like that in the early 70s. And in this image, you can see how he plotted the point on his wife's face. He just replicated that inside a computer and mirrored it. Something that we do to this day in 3D model. I mean, just look at any Disney 3D character nowadays. They're pretty much symmetrical. The same animations you just saw, the hand and the face, those two were used in a movie called Future World in 1976. And see, there they are. This was the first time in history that 3D was used in a movie. And as you may know, it wasn't the last. 3D pretty quickly started gaining popularity. In 1977, a young man named George Lucas used 3D models in one of his films, Star Wars. In this scene right here. Pretty cool, huh? But if you think that wireframe models are not too exciting, take a look at Tron. Not this Tron. Tron, welcome to the 80s. You can see the evolution already. The 3D models have complex shapes and shading, and I love the aesthetics of their CGI. That may or may not have inspired me in some way. This was the Avengers Infinity of their time. And don't forget, computers looked like this in 1982. Yeah, imagine creating a film inside of this. And there's a 15 minute scene that was 100% computer generated in 1982. I really recommend watching Tron if you're curious. And speaking of cutting edge and aesthetics, computer models weren't only used in films, but also music videos. In 1985, The Dire Straits released one of my favorite songs of all time and one of my favorite music videos, Money For Nothing. Now, if I even briefly play the song in my video, the strike will arrive faster than the speed of light. But boy, does this song put me in a mood. But let's analyze the 3D models. And you can see there's nothing really smooth. The characters have hard edges and even spherical objects are faceted, but why? The technology to make things look smoother was available at the time, and it's called Cadmo Clark Subdivision. The Cadmo guy, again? Yes, that guy. Even to this day, we use that technology. Look at my 3D software here, for example. You can see their names, in case you think I'm making this stuff up. The 1980s were great for 3D. Back then, 
We already had some short films that were 100% computer generated, like The Adventures of Andre and Wally B, Luke So Jr. and Tin Toy. But the 90s were very special. Watch The Terminator 2, Judgment Day. My god, the CGI of this film is from another planet. I can make a whole video just on the Terminator. But let's focus on the 3D modeling, which is the topic of this video. You can see here that one of the techniques that they used for modeling the faces was 3D scanning. They told the actor to sit still and barely breathe for a couple of seconds so the machine could scan their faces and reproduce it inside a computer. Now, if you're wondering how a 3D scanner works, think about a camera that besides only capturing light, it can calculate distances, which is all we need for a 3D model. The result, as you can see, is in the movie. Very soon after the Terminator, we had Jurassic Park. Look at the CGI of this 27-year-old film. It's unbelievable. I remember watching it as a kid and it made me think the dinosaurs were real. Now, they don't really explain the process of modeling the dinosaurs, but if I were to guess, I think they created a fifth of a scale model, like in clay, and then 3D scanned it and modeled it inside a computer. In the year after that, we had the Flintstones, the first film that used CGI rendered fur. Now, if you want to learn more about hair and fur and CGI, check out my video on that. Then 1995 comes and we have Toy Story. It was indeed the first film that was 100% 3D animated. Now compare the CGI of Toy Story with the other films that we just looked at. Does it deserve the hype? You let me know in the comments, because right now we're gonna look at the next technological advancement that helped 3D modeling, and it's called digital sculpting. Digital sculpting is basically used in every film you watch nowadays. It's a much more intuitive way of creating 3D models, and I'm gonna explain to you how it works. Now here, I have my 3D software open. This is a digital sculpting software, it's called the ZBrush. So let's understand how it works. So if I turn on my grid here, you can see that this object has a lot of faces, right? And uh, I can grab a brush, and this brush is called Move, and I can move certain points. Let's do something more interesting. And even activate symmetry and enlarge the brush and pull a bunch of points. Can use clay buildup, for example, and move those points in a much more organic way. And in case you're wondering, I'm using the pan and tablet. So you can see that if I'm pressing lightly, you can't see much of a difference. But if I press really hard, it makes a huge difference. But like that, you can have really organic shapes. Like a character, like a nose, and then a mouth, and then a ear, jawline. Move things real quick. And do, do, do. there's many brushes here, like H polish, you can flatten things out. Look at that. Let me activate perspective so it's a little bit more, more accurate. And the cheek. You can see that it's a much more organic and interactive way to sculpt something. And if you're wondering if they use this program or this process to make any Disney movie, and the answer is yes. I know a couple of artists that worked on some things and props for Moana and many other movies. Well, now I think you understand what 3D means in a 3D animated movie. Hit a like if you liked it, and get the hoodie. If you wanna look really dope and fresh, the drip is thick. Link in the description. I love you all, and stay three-dimensional in the space-time continuum. Now, they don't really explain... <laughs> now, they don't really explain... Explain? America, explain! Don't... <laughs> then the new... The CGI on that film looks better than the CGI used nowadays. Let me...